Hey, I'm so excited to be here this morning. Are you? Yes. If we could, uh, when we close today, we're going to pray. Let's continue this atmosphere of prayer and worship, can we? Let's do that. Um, and we'll get there in just a moment. I'll explain where we're going shortly. But I do want to say hi to Tiffany McSkimming over here. She's one of our own, one of our missionaries. She's back in the States for a little bit. So it's good to see you. Tell Jason hi. We miss him. And we're so happy for you guys. And so definitely glad to, to see you. Sorry that it couldn't be warmer for you. I know your climate is warmer where you're at. But um, anyways, we're glad that you're here. Um, man, something is wrong with me, and I need you guys to pray for me. Yesterday, when I got out of the car, I was walking into the grocery store with my family, and um, I walked outside, and I thought, it feels pretty good outside. <laughs> and I said, hey, Siri, what's the temperature? It is six degrees in Urbandale, Iowa. And I thought, something is wrong if it feels good when it's six degrees. So would you pray for me that I would be rescued from this mindset? But it, man, if, if Mother Nature was into wrestling, she did some good body slams on us last week, right? My goodness, all that snow and the cold. Again, I reiterate what Pastor Jeff said. Thank you to our, our snow team that came out and did that. None of us wanted to be out doing our own snow, and they did their own snow, and they came and served at the church, so we really, really appreciate it. So like Pastor Jeff said, um, this message is part of our Fresh Wind series that has been extended over a couple of weeks now, and so I've been praying and sitting on this message for a few weeks. Uh, Pastor Luke, Pastor Zach, Pastor August, they've all shared um, for this series. So go back if you missed any of them and, and watch them, re-listen to them. But today I want to share with you a few thoughts on having an eternal perspective, all right? So I want to set the stage for having an eternal perspective. And then within that, um, we're going to have some godly perspectives or some biblical perspectives that we can apply to our life. And so at the end, like I said, I want us to respond in prayer, respond in a time of, of worship and prayer, um, asking God to help us keep eternity in mind. When we live with an, an eternal perspective, an eternity in mind, it's the wisest way to live, I believe. It's the wisest way that we can live. It keeps us fr from chasing empty dreams and just material gratification, doesn't it? Um, it keeps us from wasting our years just pursuing temporary things that we can't take with us when we die. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.18, you'll see it on the screen. It says, yes. It says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's Paul speaking. And then he also shares in Colossians chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When we have an eternal perspective, I believe it impacts us on every level. Do you agree? When we, we have eternity in mind always, it impacts how we view our time on earth. It impacts our relationships with people. It impacts how we view and how we use our money. Come on now. And it impacts so much more. We live for things that what money can't buy and death can't take away, don't we? So let's pray and then we'll get started. Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, to be in your presence. I pray that you would speak Speak to our hearts, God. Help us to keep our minds and our hearts set upon you and upon eternity. In your mighty name we pray and everybody said, amen. So behind me here is this uh, long rope. And if you would imagine with me that this rope represents eternity. I realize there's a start and an end, but pretend it just keeps going, okay? I couldn't buy a forever rope. Uh, but but th this rope represents eternity and um, and this, this caution tape here, some of you are already onto this, this represents our short, brief time and stint here on earth, all right? So as you view this today, eternity, life on earth. And with an eternal perspective, obviously, we're supposed to have the whole picture in mind and live for what is beyond this. But a lot of times, this is our only focus, isn't it? Like we, we get distracted of the here and now. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you're taking notes, the title is Eternal Perspective. I want to remind us today that life is short. We're not here for very long, are we? 
Our time here is very short compared to eternity. Psalm 90 verse 10 says, as for the days of our life, they contain 70, maybe 80 years, yet their pride is only trouble and it quickly passes and we disappear. James 4, 14, he says, yeah, you don't know what your life will be like tomorrow for you're just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. That moment in time is just a vapor. Yet, it feels like forever, doesn't it? Sometimes the days seem to like be dragging on forever. When we're cooped up from all the, the snowstorms and the cold weather and we don't go anywhere, that feels like 24 hours is now three weeks long, you know? And, and so that moment feels like forever, but if we can gain an eternal perspective and realize it's just a quick little vapor in the vastness of, of eternity. So before I go any further, I want to share with us this thought. In order to start having an eternal perspective, in order to start having the eternity in mind perspective, we have to start with Jesus, don't we? We always have to start with Jesus. John 3, 16 says this, and and say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. The Bible is riddled with verses and teachings and stories of eternity and having an eternal life, an eternal perspective. But if we start with Jesus, that's step number one. So today, if you're starting with that, as we pray in just a little bit, I want you to come find me, come find one of the pastors, find someone and tell them, I'm starting with Jesus today. Or maybe I'm restarting with someone with Jesus and I, and I wanna tell people. Um, Hebrews chapter 11. It tells us of some of the giants of faith that the Bible has recorded. And it's, some of you have, have heard this said before, but it's kind of like the hall of fame for those who um, had faith. And so real quick, in Hebrews chapter 11, I'm going to read a few scriptures um, before we continue. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, it says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place where he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went Even though he didn't know where he was going, by faith he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And then jump down to verse 13. All these people, meaning all that that this chapter has talked about, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. Listen to what it says. People who say uh, such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country that they had left, they would have opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. And for he has prepared a city for them. It's interesting that these Old Testament heroes of faith viewed their time on earth as maybe what we would if we're making a, a, a road trip across the country. You know, you make a quick stop at the gas station, a quick stop in this city or this city, but eventually you're returning home, right? And they viewed time on earth the same way. It, we're just here for a little bit of time, but there's a heavenly city that they're ready for, that they're excited for. They had no intentions of making earth their homestead. Abraham knew that. And he looked forward to the city whose architect and builder was God. Pause for a moment. This, is, this stood out to me a, a few weeks ago. He was looking forward to a city whose architect and builder was God. Think of this. The creator of everything, of the stars, the moon, the mountains, humankind, intelligence, that creator, he's making a city. He's, he's sketching it out and he's building it. That's the city that I want to see. Do you? I want to be there. I want to see that city. Because if the beauty of our earth that we see and know of as right now, you know, just is being built by someone who also is building a city, man, let's go there. Abraham lived as a stranger, as a pilgrim in this world. For us today, as followers of Jesus, we're also strangers. We're pilgrims here. Repeatedly, the Bible compares life on earth, and it uses words like this, um, alien, 
pilgrim, foreigner, stranger, visitor, uh, traveler, all to describe our brief stint here on earth. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 19, I'm a stranger on earth. Peter said in 1 Peter 1, 17, if you call God your father, live your lives here as strangers in reverent fear. This isn't our homeland, guys. We weren't intended to be here forever. Even though it feels like it, and what we go through in life, it feels like it's dragging on forever, but I'm, I'm praying that we can have an eternal perspective on life because there's a city that's being built by our ultimate creator, God. But if we can be honest with ourselves, we tend to focus all of our passions, all of our desires, and all of our time on this moment here. How many of you would agree? You've been, you've been guilty of that at times. We focus on this. But yet our creator wants us to focus on the, the, the vastness of it. So when we have an eternal perspective, it impacts so much. And here's the three thoughts that we're going to right now. When we have an eternal perspective, we view life as a temporary assignment. It changes our view of others and we find joy in the eternal. So those are the three points. Number one is this. When we have an eternal perspective, we view life as a temporary assignment. Even though this moment in time is brief, we still have a job to do, don't we? It does, it, it's not like, let's just get this time over with so we can spend eternity with God. While we're here, there's a job to do. There's an assignment to do. Temporary or not, there's still assignment to do. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors. Think of this, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is a diplomat that, that is sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. So someone from the United States has gone to foreign countries and represents us and is living there. As an ambassador, they live in a foreign country. Tiffany, you can relate to this. Life is different. The culture is different. The language is different. The food is different. If you've, how many of you traveled to a foreign country and you realize I'm ready to come back and eat food from my home, right? It's good, but I'm ready for some steak and eggs or some hamburgers, all that kind of stuff. An ambassador lives in a foreign country. Listen, as Christ's ambassadors, our kingdom is eternal, right? It's an eternal kingdom. And so life is going to be different here on earth, all right? Newsflash. Not everybody follows God's standards. Not everybody lives according to the Bible. And so the way and the culture, it's going to be different. An ambassador, they represent their home country, as an ambassador for Christ, we represent Jesus. We represent our eternal kingdom by how we live, how we act, how we treat people, our words, our motives. We have been given this ministry of reconciliation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you can turn there if you'd like or I'll read it from, from my Bible. 2 Corinthians 5, starting verse 17, this is Paul speaking. He says, therefore, if anybody is in Christ, he's a new creation the old is gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconcil reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. That is our job. We've been given this ministry of reconciliation as followers of Jesus Christ to reconcile people who are lost and wandering away from their heavenly father and bring them back into that. That's our assignment, reconciliation, heaven, to go there, but to take as many with us as possible. That's our assignment. That's what we're supposed to do. Listen, salvation began with God, didn't it? It didn't begin with any ideas that we have on earth. It began with God. He was the one. He sent his son. While we were enemies of God, it's not that God is estranged from man. It's that man is estranged from God. And God wants his children to come home and to trust in him. That's our job is to reconcile, do the, what we can to reconcile people. Robert Morris says, God has delivered to us salvation and the power to help people. And he expects us to use and to, to distribute that. Our job is to get this message out, guys. View life as a temporary assignment here on earth. It's, it's a temporary assignment, but it's crucial to do so. So another thing that happens when we view life, 
with an eternal perspective. Not only do we see it as a temporary assignment, but our view of other people changes. When God impacts your life and you begin to see eternity in mind, the, the full picture, we see people differently than maybe what we would have before. In 2 Corinthians 5, 16, Paul says, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. And so in, in this chapter, Paul is explaining what Christ has done to him and what his Christ has done for us. He has reconciled us to his, his, his father. All right, he's reconciled us. He, is, he has done everything he can to save us and bring us back into that relationship with him. And because of that, that changes how we view God and that changes how we view other people. The worldly standard had died for Paul, all right? How he had been living, that worldly standard had died. That worldly standard for us should have died when we chose to follow Christ. When we choose to follow Christ, it should die. And that includes how we view and how we treat other people. Saved or unsaved, our view of other people should change. In my Wednesday night Bible study, uh, we started the book of Titus this past week. And one thing that stood out to me that was, was interesting that I want to share with you is this, is that Titus, Paul is writing to Titus, and he's on the island of Crete. And the Cretans were known for not following the Lord, right? How many of you have read this book and you know they, they were known to be liars and cheaters and immoral people. And, and Paul, when he's writing to Titus, he doesn't say to, to Titus, hang on, just hunker down, hide away. When I get there, we'll rescue you. We'll get you out of there. Paul is saying to Titus, I want you to have a healthy church. In the midst of these people that were known, they admitted that this is how they lived. I want you to have a healthy church. I want you to serve the Lord on this island here. He didn't say, just figure something out, get out of there as quickly as possible. And by the way, go on social media and post about it and complain how bad these people are, right? Let them know how bad they are. No, Paul said, hunker down and stay there and have a healthy representation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he wanted Titus to do. And that's what happened. So for us, how about we extend grace and kindness instead of quickly judging people? Guess what? You you needed it and you still need it. I still need the grace and kindness of Jesus. Let's get mad at the sin Let's pray more than we complain about it. Let's do the ministry of reconciliation instead of going onto social media to point out all of the flaws and complain about it. How about this? Let's act like Jesus did when he met us in our mess. How about that, right? Let's do the ministry of reconciliation. We have to view others as a precious soul that God sent his one and only son for so they can spend eternity also with him. This, this line isn't just for you. This line is for everybody, whether they're right now following the Lord or not. We have the job of reconciliation, so let's take it seriously. And finally, when we have an eternal perspective, we find joy in the eternal. We find joy in the eternal. We view life as a temporary assignment. Our view of others changes and we find joy in the eternal. Everybody's offering joy, right? The commercials that you see on TV or the ads you hear on the radio, like joy seems to be like, man, if you just buy this product, you're gonna be joyful, you're gonna be happy. Uh, You want some joy, buy this drink. You want some joy, move to the Caribbean. Hello, let's go there now. (laughs) Temporary or not, let's go right? You want some joy? Eat at this restaurant, drive this car, hook up with this person. Every commercial portrays this joy-filled person, right? Everybody wants it. Everybody promises it. But can anybody really truly deliver on this topic of joy? Joy is a big topic in the Bible. Our heavenly father wants his children to be filled with joy. But the joy that God offers is different than what is offered at the car dealership or on the Amazon Prime one-day delivery, right? 
God is not interested in putting this temporary smile on your face. He's not interested in just giving you a little shot in the arm to make, get you through the day type of moment. God isn't interested in that. How many of you already know that that's come to be true? God is not interested in that. He has no interest in shallow happiness that, that melts when adversity comes. He does offer you a joy that is deep and rooted in him. It's ballistic, strong, a joy that can weather the most difficult of storms. The joy that people search for most of the time, and we've been all guilty of this, the joy that we search for happens here, doesn't it? This is the joy that I would call contingent contingent joy. This is the type of joy that I'll be happy when joy. I'll be happy if joy. If I just get that new house, or, or maybe a different spouse, I'll be happy then. This type of joy that we focus on in this moment of eternity is very contingent on circumstances, isn't it? And since we can't control circumstances, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment time and time again. Contingent joy. But the joy that God offers us and wants us to have, the joy that we were created for, for all, An eternal joy is called unconditional joy. It is a joy that is meant to last, a joy that is not contingent on a circumstance that happens on the here and now. But the joy that God offers and the joy that we were created for is from an eternal God that is based on his salvation and what he has done for us. Listen, if the world supplies your joy, then the world can take it away, right? If Jesus in the hope of eternity supplies your joy, then nothing can take it away. The world didn't create you, right? We didn't evolve into this who we are now. It didn't give us breath. The joy that this world offers is cheap. It's a temporary substitute. But the author of life, the creator of you, knows you. And don't you think if the creator of you knows you, he knows what will bring you true joy? The joy that is meant to last for eternity. The joy that isn't contingent. The joy that is unconditional. He understands you. He knows how you're wired and he loves you and he wants you to have a joy that is based on him. The the joy that is based on, on his son, Jesus. Our joy comes from mercy. Our joy comes from grace. Our joy comes from forgiveness. Psalm 32 says, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. His sins are covered. That's a blessing that happens. Psalm 51 verse 12 says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Our joy comes from God. Our joy comes from the salvation that he offers. So is that to say that your life will be carefree and there will be no storms, right? Raise your hand real quick if you've gone through a stormy time in life, all right? Look around, all right? There's lots of hands going up. There's going, there are sorrows, right? We go through nighttime moments, and it's so tough. Jesus says that in this world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. There's going to be sorrow. But I can tell you this, that that sorrow doesn't last forever. Those of you who have walked through tragedy, you know that it was the darkest of nights in your, t- in your life. But after a season, after journey, j- going through that journey with the Lord, you're, you, the, night, the morning has come and that joy has been restored. That doesn't mean that you didn't trust in the Lord in the darkest of nights, but it does mean that God is faithful to you in the darkest of nights and your joy was a bedrock in your life because it was based on him. I have a specific word that I wanna share with Maybe it's all of us. Maybe it's just one of you that needs to hear this, but it's this. The circumstances that we go through in life, they do a really good job of robbing our joy, don't they? Really good job. 
all of us here, none of us have been exempt from sorrowful times. None of us here have, can say without a shadow of a doubt, I have never had a difficult time in my life. None of us. Joy can be robbed. Joy can be taken away. Joy can, can feel like this dark, sorrowful moment and it's gone. But I want to encourage some of you here today, or maybe all of us, is that God is faithful. Listen, our joy is not contingent, even though it's so difficult what we go through. Our joy ultimately is not contingent on what this world offers or what this world takes away. Our joy is an unconditional joy that comes from our Heavenly Father who created us. And so if you are going through a difficult time today, man, I just want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't quit. It feels like you want to, doesn't it? It feels like I'm, I'm going to hang it up. This faith thing and trusting God is not worth it because I, I can't seem to catch a break. I promise you, this night may seem like it goes on forever, but the Bible tells us joy comes in what? The morning. Joy comes in the morning time. It's going to happen. Nehemiah 8.10 says that the joy of the Lord is what? Our strength. I believe that the purest joy shines in the darkest of nights. Worship team, would you join me? So when we have this eternal perspective... We view life as a temporary assignment. When we have an eternal perspective, our view of other people changes. And when we have an eternal perspective, we get joy from the eternal. If you've ever been on a boat, maybe a small little fishing boat, and, um, or whatever size of boat it may be, there's, there's something called the anchor that you have, and you drop that in the water when you need to stay put. And you know that there's going to be some waves, possibly the wind is going to try and push you around, and it's going to, the elements are going to impact the boat. However, when that anchor is solid, the boat what? Stays put, right? Um, our faith, let's, let's envision it like, like that, where, listen, that anchor is, is, is Jesus Christ. That anchor is the salvation, the good news of what he's done for us. And, and our anchor is down there, and it's, it's there. But man, life is doing a good job at distracting us from the eternal, doesn't it? And we focus on the here and now. And so we, we take our eyes off the temporary assignment. We, we start to get critical of people. Our joy is robbed all because of what's happening around us. But can I encourage you to maintain that anchor and hang, that anchor is there and it is Jesus Christ and what he has done. Would you stand with me today? Like I said at the beginning, I want us to have, continue our time of worship and, and prayer and um, encourage you in just a little bit as we sing, would, would you respond? That might look like coming forward. That might look like kneeling where you're at, finding a place to pray here. But man, I've, I've, I've had this in my heart for a few weeks now of just encouraging us. I want us to have eternity in mind. When you go to the doctor's office and you know it might not be great news, it can be discouraging. But in your spirit, would you pray and say, God, would you help me to remember my joy is from you. I get my joy from you. So do you have an eternal perspective? If you're starting with Jesus today, here's what I want to encourage you with. Jesus says in John 5, 24, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me, has eternal life. That's where we start. And so if you're starting with Jesus today or you're hitting the refresh button with Jesus today, I'm gonna pray right now. And in your heart, would you join me as we pray? And then at some point today, would you find me, find a pastor and say, man, I started with Jesus today. Jesus, we thank you that eternal life is in you. 
and through you and we come to you Jesus God we're Jesus, we're not perfect and we've made so many mistakes. We've fallen short of, of all that you've asked us. But today we start with you, Jesus. We, we want to spend eternity with you. We want to have an eternal perspective, but we realize that it's you and only you. So Jesus, we surrender. Be our Lord. Be our Savior. Jesus, we need you. With your eyes closed as in a moment of just reflecting, I want to ask you these questions before we sing. Have you lost sight and been distracted from the eternal? Have you lost sight of the mission that God has given you? Is the joy of your salvation a past memory and you want it restored? Is your joy more contingent than it is unconditional? Do you feel like you're in a night season? You're discouraged. Your joy has been robbed. Any and all of those or something else I want us to pray especially man if you're discouraged today would you come forward as we sing in just a moment so we can pray for you I don't want to see anyone walk out of here discouraged but I pray that your joy is restored even now would you just begin to pray Jesus would you help restore to me the joy of my salvation of your salvation that you've done Help me to have an eternal perspective. Jesus, help my heart to be fixed on you, my eyes to be fixed on you on eternity. Not on the here and now. Jesus, I need you. resonate with you or it's something else would you come forward so we can pray and as the worship team leads us make this time as a time of prayer and worship I encourage you to come forward so we can pray